it's important for you to have friends. It's maybe even more important to be a friend. It's A.D. Roundtree. Hey, you, how's it going? How are you? Welcome to this, your Monday edition of the show. Yeah, your Monday, your new day of your new week, your clean slate, your fresh start, a chance for you and I to move forward together into whatever it is that happens next, a chance for you to kick an entirely new week directly where it counts. You're doing awesome. Hang in there. You got this. You are a badass. And if you need something, if there's anything I can do for you to make your Monday better, hit me up. I'm here with you. I'm here for you. At ADSXE, it's where you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at ADSXE. Put it in your phone now in case you need it later. So I did something interesting this past weekend just gone by. I did something that filled me with trepidation. I did something not knowing how it would go, worried that it could go south. I saw people in person, face to face. For the first time since, well, since mid-November. Mid-November when my father had a medical emergency where he lived in Kosovo. I went there to try and bring him home. It was supposed to be a three-day trip. Every day got more difficult and complicated. And there was another problem on top of another problem until uh, two months had gone by. And I finally got him home. Where just after seeing... My sister and his sister, he passed away. So I've been out of the country. I've been dealing with a lot. And then I came home and have been waiting for waves of grief to hit me. And uh, since mid-November, I hadn't seen anyone who wasn't a doctor, a nurse, a hospital attendant, someone at the grocery store. I hadn't seen anyone I knew outside of some family members. And, well, there was a convention in town, a lot of radio and media people. Metallica and Billy Joel were also in town. And in light of that fact, a lot of my friends were in town as well. And I knew I wanted to see them. I knew there would be a bunch of them around in the same place at the same time. And I would probably have to tell the same story, answer the same questions several times. Now, if I recount what happened to me over the last few months once, it has an effect. If I do that multiple times in a row without much of a break between it, I can be a bit of a mess. Grief is not something you manage. Grief manages you, as I've discovered over the last several weeks. But I knew it was time. I knew there were people I hadn't seen in a very long time that were going to be around. I knew that there was a chance I wouldn't get an opportunity to see them again. So I took a deep breath And I went and said hello. And parts of it were incredibly painful because I did have to tell that story. I did have to relive some of the things I'd been through. Things that I would rather not relive. Especially in public. Especially surrounded by a bunch of my friends. Especially surrounded by a bunch of my peers. But I did it. And I'm very glad that I did. Because outside of that... I left feeling unbelievably fortunate. I left the weekend feeling unbelievably grateful. I left the weekend feeling as though people cared. People had my back. People wanted things to be okay for me. And I knew that. I knew that anyway. I'm lucky. I've got some really good friends. And I don't mean that they're good friendships. I mean they're good people that happen to be my friends. I'm incredibly lucky. And I knew that. I knew they were there for me. I knew people had reached out and I knew that. But it was somehow different. It somehow brought it home. Looking into their eyes 
as I spoke to them for the first time in a long time. It made a real difference, and it left me feeling incredibly lucky. And also, some of my friends have absolutely vile senses of humor. And, uh, well, I laughed harder than I've laughed in a very, very, very long time. Wild, inappropriate laughter at things that people probably shouldn't be laughing at. Which was, in a way, healing. What's the old expression? Tragedy plus time equals comedy? Well, I don't know if enough time had elapsed, but I felt as though some of the things that have happened to me over the last several months, after telling my story to a couple friends and then being able to laugh afterwards, I felt like it turned some of my personal tragedy into comedy. Reminded me of why you and I hang out and do this. Every day for years and years, you and I shared music and laughs and conversations. And well, now it's more about the conversations. But the laughs will come too. The laughs will come back. And... I can say it was one of the single most healing things that's ever happened to me. To spend time with friends. To spend time in the company of friends. And I did have moments where I felt shaky. But you know what? Other people did too. And it reminded me of the benefits of being a friend. You and I have talked about this over and over again on the show. People ask me how I manage my emotions, my state of mind, how I've managed depression, negativity, not just over the last few months, but over the last couple of years and in general. People have said to me over and over again, you're positive, you're uplifting, this is why I listen to your show. How do you do it? <laughs> and what well, we've talked, we've talked about the three main things that I do to kind of manage my state of mind, exercise, uh, more recently, meditation, and uh, the other thing being looking for an opportunity to lift people up. Looking for an opportunity to help. Focusing myself on something other than myself, if that makes sense. And I had an opportunity to do that too this weekend. A friend of mine, never had this happen to him before. I won't mention his name because it's a personal thing. But he wasn't able to take his flight home. He got on the flight, he got in his seat, and he had a panic attack, or what he thinks was a panic attack. He felt like his world was caving in, and he felt like he had to get off the plane. Tried moving seats, that wouldn't do it. And eventually, well, he had to exit the plane, go to the hospital, make sure it wasn't a heart attack or a stroke or something of that nature, which it was not, and determine that it was a panic, panic attack and get some medication and then worry about being able to get on a flight home the next day. And what was interesting was I was meeting a group of friends for a meal and he was there, which was surprising to me. And I had a little bit of anxiousness, a little bit of nerves going into this. Because I was like, okay, there's going to be these people. I'm going to have to recount my story. Every time I do that, I pay sort of an emotional cost. And I don't want to, I don't want to, hmm, yeah, I, I don't want to kind of lose it in the middle of this happy reunion of friends. And I felt a little shaky, felt a little uneasy going in. But there was this guy who was supposed to, be go, who was supposed to have gone home. And I was like, well, this is an unexpected treat. How come you're here? And he told me the story of getting on the plane, having a panic attack, something that has never happened to him before, having to get off the plane and trying to secure some sort of medication for his flight home to calm him once he got on. If this were to happen to him again. And the moment I saw the look of concern in his eyes, the moment I saw the worry that he had 
All my troubles were forgotten. And I was focused on him, asking him how he was, asking him what happened, asking him if there was anything I could do to help. And he's like, well, you're the only friend I have that actually lives here. Could you, <laughs> could you be around tomorrow if I need someone? I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you have a problem getting on the plane, you know what to do. Call me. And the moment I started putting up my focus on somebody else who was having a bit of a situation, I noticed all my problems, all my difficulties, all my nerves about seeing people for the first time in a long time, all my worries about having to tell the story of the last few months and what it would do to me, that all went away. It was like one of those headaches that clears up instantly. You ever had that happen to you? It's like... You've got a headache and something happens and you've got to go pay attention to that quickly. And then you realize a little while later, hey, what happened to my headache? I was going to take some, okay, I guess I won't take some aspirin. It was like that. All of a sudden, all my troubles vanished in a poof of caring about someone. I didn't realize it at the time. But about half an hour into our meal together, I was like, huh, I'm having a great time. I'm not worried about anything. Why? Oh, yeah, because I focused on someone else. You and I talk about this a lot. You and I talk about how often the secret to being positive, dealing with the blues, depression, whatever you want to call them, the secret to that is to care about someone else, care for someone else. Focus on someone other than yourself and their well-being. And it has this magical way of affecting your well-being. You and I have talked about this a lot. But it never fails to amaze me when it happens in practice. Especially something like this. Especially in a situation where I was nervous. I was unsure. I was in uncharted territory. I was seeing people for the first time since a lot had happened to me. I was headed off into this relatively new experience on rickety Bambi-as-a-baby-esque legs. Unsure of my emotional and mental footing. More than a little bit rickety. And it all disappeared. It all went away when I started being a friend to someone who needed a friend. And it reminded me of the importance of that, the importance of friendships. Jobs, workplaces, graduating classes, teams that you're on, bowling leagues you're in, whatever the case may be. All this stuff is impermanent. All these situations will come and go. There will be ups and downs in life. There will be changes in your situation. But friendship, when done right, is something that will last through all of this. And you need that. And your friends need you. It's an important thing. And you and I have talked about this a lot, but... When it slaps you in the face, in the way it did for me this weekend, it was a big reminder of just how much being a friend matters. And for that reason, I had to remind you of it. Think where a man's glory begins and ends, and say my glory was I had such friends. Yates. And Kramer on Seinfeld. That is it for me, friend. Thank you so much for hanging. Thank you for being a part of my radio family. As always, this time that you and I spend together, it's the best part of my day. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll do it all over again. Have a good one. Later.